Well, in front of me, actually, I'm standing here with, uh, you are of Jewish descent, Harris, right? That your, is your correct. Your name is Harris, great. And you are a convert to the LDS Church? That is correct. Okay. I'm glad you're watching my show. You've been watching it for some time. Thank you very much for watching it. I, I do appreciate uh, LDS people watching my show. I'm pleased with it. You are. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm trying to do the best I possibly can with it. <laughs> Um, well, as you know, with Have You Experienced Jesus, we have different topics of conversation. And today's topic is a very important topic because in the LDS faith, you claim that you have the true church, the actual true church of, of God. And um, it's, a, it's a very important discussion for Christians to understand why you believe that, as well as LDS to understand the Christian point of view. And we're going to have a lot of Christians talking about how they believe the true church, the true body of Christ is all about. But anyway, nonetheless, what I wanted to ask you simply is when you're looking at the true church, what should the true church be comprised of? Well, the true church should be comprised of those who have been born again through faith in Christ and have brought forth his works upon the face of the earth because he said that because I go to my father the works that I do ye shall do and and greater works than I have done yeah he's he's actually has said those are the believers that that have believed in Christ become like you said born of him received him now become child a child of God and because we are born again now we have his spirit to be in us and so we could do many works he was only on the earth doing his ministry for about three years right correct yeah and so we're on the earth doing a lot more but we could possibly never do what he did on the cross that's that's for sure there's no doubt about that that's true that was a great sacrifice the only last sacrifice for for all right he paid uh back the law of justice yeah. and the proof of the pudding was that on the third day he was re resurrected again to life yes and he appeared to 500 brethren at once yes he did and uh i love that that's corinthians first corinthians 15 verses uh three to eight i believe that you're referring to good so, i'm yeah. glad you know the scriptures yeah. better yeah. than i do no it's the gospel <laughs> of jesus christ that's what we're talking about yes. but lds also claim that they have the true church and and as you know here there's a lot of other faiths out there like the jehovah witnesses they claim that they have the true church you might have the greek eastern orthodox church that claim they have the true church the catholics that have the true church is it really a true church kind of concept with the minis you know with with priests with all this other legalized things going on ordinances and, and all the stuff or is it really in your point of view more of like you were talking about before the heart to be connected to him to be circumcised by the heart well it's both of course and um, where we stand uh, with the religion of Jesus Christ in our hearts is because God our Father is a personal being he's indeed the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the Savior and Redeemer of the world and the Father and the Son did come down in 1830 and appear to the prophet Joseph Smith and after that John the Baptist came and restored the authority to baptize and Peter James and John the authority of the Holy Pros uh, Apostleship to organize anew the Church of Jesus Christ on the earth and then Moses uh, brought forth the keys of the gathering of Israel from the four corners of so the earth. So you believe it was more of a, of a sequence of things that happen in your faith to prove that you guys have the, the so-called true church. It, so it had to be set up in a, in a different pattern, in the pattern that, that you're proclaiming right now. But well, as, as Christians really speak and, and know in their hearts that we are all united together um, as in one spirit. And once we are connected as one spirit, we really are the believers, are his children. My concern a little bit is, is this, and, and someone proclaiming they have the true church, is it more of like a separatist sort of viewpoint that we are separate from everybody else because everybody who believes differently than us are really not a part of that church? I mean, what is your feeling about that? Well, we believe that all those who obey the gospel of God. And what is the gospel of God? The gospel of God is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what is and that exactly? And obey his ordinances. Okay. As Jesus said, except ye are born of the water and of the spirit, ye cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And we believe that that can happen after this life 
so that those who go on into the spirit realm can have those ordinances done for them and they can accept them or reject them. Okay, so basically you're, t you're saying, and, and, and I appreciate you being honest and sharing your, your understanding of what you believe in this, but when you're saying those type of things, what you're really saying to any Christian who does an opposite view and they believe that through um, their, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit coming in while they are re they received Christ and put their faith and trust in Him. They do that. And yeah, that the Holy Spirit, Spirit now Christ. rests inside them and now they are a child of God. We believe as Christians that we are actually part of His body. And so by going to the point that you're referring to, Harrison, I just wanted to share this just for a second. By going to that point, what happens to all the Christians of the world who have that understanding, in your view, they won't make it to heaven because they have to go through your ordinances and your baptism no and your authority no to get to heaven. No way. You Every, don't believe that? Everyone will have the opportunity. Now the thing that... Well, no, what I'm saying is, is that because Christians believe in a rapture, yeah. that we're going to be yeah. twinkled in a second. That's true. That Christ is going to pick his church up and that we're going to be with him in the clouds. That's true. And we'll be with him and, and Paul states that take comfort in that because that's how it's going to be. Yeah, this is so, true. So, yeah. but you then, in your understanding, you believe that it's just only LDS people being twinkled, not no. anyone else? No. Because if we're twinkled, if we don't have the ordinances, how can we be with Christ? Well, the thing that differentiates the, tr the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is that we have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, we believe that we have that too. But the the whole Christian world has the Holy Ghost in as much as they keep God's laws and commandments and um, well we don't believe that we don't in the Christian world we don't believe that we have to follow all the laws and com laws in order to obtain righteousness we are made righteous by receiving Jesus by receiving him and 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 he imputes his righteousness that's true in us and so we are that's made true. holy that's so we true. we believe that we are made righteous not by laws but by our faith and our belief yeah, yeah. well faith is a work I mean it, yeah well yeah I mean, because if you want to call it a work you can because I, I always say faith does work <laughs> yeah how does that work well, excellent. faith works excellent faith yeah. works because yeah everything in the universe is in motion yes and by the laws of physics anything in motion is doing work yep. so what's grace grace is a work that someone does for someone else that they well, can't do grace for is a free gift you're right it's a free gift yeah, from we don't Christ. Have, but it's not a reward we don't have to earn we, it we don't earn it no we don't earn it it's, it's a free, a free gift. gift and we're saved by it but we have to accept it by living the religion of Jesus Christ do we have to accept it by living the religion or living re, no. living the the actual faith and believing what he did on the cross that he paid for our sins and then that. at that point we we truly know we trust him we repent of our sins then we go through this process in our and I guess in this sense the process I don't want to talk process because that's a different kind of concept because with religions with Christians it's not a process it's it's certainly putting your faith and being born of him once you're born of him you have his his free gift of grace you have his and you can't do anything else you have right. you have to receive it Yes. And you have to repent moment by moment to keep His Spirit with you always. So yeah, we don't believe that His Spirit goes in and out of us as Christians. We really, really believe that once we're imputed with His righteousness, once we become a child of God, He says to us, you're my child. And so we're well, not going to be in a position to we, we, uh, all of a sudden say, well, tomorrow I'm not His child. We, we, we hope so, but we can't sin and sin and sin and have grace, you know, because God is a God of of, judge, of judgment and justice. Yeah. So that's the other side. He's loving. He has great loving kindness and yes. and loves us with all his heart. He does. But he's just and uh, true and uh, merciful. And that's why he sent forth a son in order to save us. To because save, he loved us so much. Not to condemn the world, yeah, but to save wrath. the world from Exactly. Sin. You're right. And that's why we now go through this, this born-again process again process but this belief that we literally are putting all our trust and our faith in him and him alone for our lives right you know? we're we're born again through faith in Christ and we can receive the gift and power of the Holy Ghost okay. and be um, born of the water and the spirit 
and receive uh, uh, what is it in the scripture the um, that's okay if you can remember fire in the Holy yeah, Ghost. yeah and who is a fire the baptism of fire is the from baptism Christ. of fire yeah the baptism the of fire Ghost. is yeah. Christ which, yeah, which is which the he brought earnest, forth. earnest of the Spirit that um, guarantees that we shall have eternal life yes. if we enter to the end. Yeah, I mean, there's we could go on a lot of discussion with this right now. Um, certainly, we don't have that much time because we got to also make room for other people. But I just want to thank you for stopping oh, by and, and giving you a chance. Same here. Thank you for for sharing your your feelings and your understanding about what you believe. Praise thank, God. Thank you kindly. No problem. Thank God you. God bless you. All right.